Tonight, a race to distribute water in Jackson, Mississippi. Cars lined up for miles outside distribution centers full of locals hoping for water left empty handed after the supply quickly ran out. Water that they are giving. Well, you can't get to because the line be so damn long. For weeks, Jackson residents have been under a boil water notice put in place last month because of contaminated water concerns. Now they're on the brink of having no water at all. State officials say flood water complications impacted storage tanks, pumps, and water flow, resulting in a failure at Jackson's main plant. The lack of water was due to pressure, a lack of pressure in the system. The water is not safe to drink, and I would even say it's not safe to brush your teeth with. So that is all happening right now. But as far back as 100 years ago, the leaders of Jackson, Mississippi, were worried about water infrastructure in that city. This is a headline from the local paper in 1922. Jackson's great growth develops new problem. A population boom had pushed the city's water treatment plant to the limit. As the city of Jackson grew and expanded, the problems with that city's water supply only got worse. But to truly understand how Mississippi's capital city found itself with a water supply that has been pushed way past the brink, it is worth looking at what happened in October of the year 1969. By that point, it was already the law of the land that racial segregation of children in public schools was unconstitutional. That had been decided 15 years earlier by the Supreme Court in Brown versus the Board of Education. But Mississippi had defied the court, keeping its schools completely segregated until 1969, when the Supreme Court essentially had to come back and say, Mississippi, do it now. At that point, the high court came out and said that continued operation of racially segregated schools under the standard of all deliberate speed is no longer constitutionally permissible. In other words, integrate immediately. White parents in Jackson were so upset by this ruling and about the potential for their children to attend school with black children that they packed a city auditorium to attend a raucous rally and air their grievances. The governor at the time, who was himself a staunch segregationist, he was so worried about parents becoming violent that he called for restraint, saying, quote, let us remember that the public schools, after all, are still public property and willful damage or destruction of these properties is senseless. It's like cutting off a nose to spite the face. That anger among white parents did not ultimately stop school integration, but it did drastically change the city of Jackson, Mississippi. It is estimated that in the three years after Jackson schools were integrated, more than 11,000 white students left Jackson's school district. And with them also left many of the white, wealthy taxpayers who moved just outside the city. All the while, Jackson's water infrastructure continued to deteriorate. And the fight for who's going to pay for it, well, that fight continues to this day. Jackson was left with outdated subpar pipes and no money for a long-term structural overhaul. And over the decades, it has only gotten worse. Which brings us to today, August 30th, 2022, and the complete system breakdown triggered by heavy flooding with raw, untreated water flowing through Jackson's taps, unfit for drinking. People in the city are now stocking up on bottled water so they can do the most basic everyday things like cook and bathe themselves. Meanwhile, Jackson's public schools are being forced to hold virtual classes, once more impacting the education of young children in a critical moment following the pandemic. It is all very, very bad, but it is a crisis, a total system failure that has been decades in the making. Joining us now is Nishambi Lambright, a Jackson native. She is also the executive director of One Voice Mississippi, a statewide leadership development and policy advocacy organization. Ms. Lambright, thank you so much for making time to be here tonight. I can only imagine what life is like for the residents of Jackson, Mississippi. Can you tell us how people have been surviving without running water in the United States of America in the year 2022? It's been really, really tough for us here in Jackson. Um, it's unimaginable to think about waking up every morning and not being able to take a shower or having to use bottled water to brush your teeth and having to use bottled water to wash dishes and to um, cook with um, and to even um, provide bottled water uh, to your pets. 
because they can't drink uh, the uh, water that's, uh, you know, being used, um, you know, coming out of the, the faucets. So it, it's been really, really um, tough on us um, here. And to imagine that we just went through this last year um, and we haven't resolved this issue yet um, is very discouraging um, for us here. Yeah, I think it bears mentioning that this has happened once before. The problems at hand today are, I think, even worse than they were a year ago, but it doesn't give a lot of hope about a long-term solution here. W what resources are available to people and are advocates working to try and solve this problem with local leaders? I mean, is there any sense that this problem is going to abate anytime soon? We are very hopeful that with federal funding, we can fix this problem. Um, as an advocate in Jackson, and I guess I have to start with, um, I, I listened to your description of the history um, of Jackson, and I was born in Jackson in 1973. So, you know, my family is, is rooted here, and I, I've seen Jackson go through a lot of changes, and I've been very hopeful about Jackson growing up here and going um, to high school here and going to college here and um, seeing um, a city grow and also seeing um, people leave the city and seeing um, people not invest in the city and, and seeing people leave the city and, and, and say, I'm not going to leave my business here and I'm not going to um, support the school system here. And so I, and I've, I've seen um, people disinvest um, in, in this city. And so I know that um, with federal funding and with state funding, we could have had this problem solved years ago. And I've seen um, our city leadership attempt to fix this problem over the years. But this problem has taken so long to get to this point. This problem, like you said, has taken 100 years to get to this point. Um, this is not an overnight problem. Yeah, I mean, we have to leave it there. I hope we are going to continue our coverage of this. It bears mentioning that the Republican governor of the state is the person who controls some of these purse strings. It is an enormous amount of money for a huge problem. But what is happening in Jackson is untenable. It is un-American that people should have to live like this. Nishambi Lambright, Jackson native and executive director of One Voice Mississippi, thank you. Good luck. Keep us posted on everything down there. Thank you so much.